everyone. I thought I'd do a different format today, just sort of a question and answer more in the format of a podcast. And I've invited Blake O'Neill yes. to be a part of this. And the reason I chose Blake is one, he has a fabulous voice. And I think that he could be a great voice talent for anyone looking for a good voice. I'm not getting anything. This is not like an affiliate or anything like that. I just really want to support fresh talent out there. And the other reason, too, is that Blake is not of the Tai Chi world. And I think sometimes we get so stuck in our own little niche that we can't get outside to know what people want to know. So I have asked Blake, and he was enthusiastic to say yes, and I'm mm -hmm. very appreciative very. of being here. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the invite. Hi, everyone. I'm Blake. A couple questions. Why do Tai Chi in general? It's interesting you ask that, because yesterday in one of my bigger classes, my live stream class, I had one gentleman ask me, he said, I woke up this morning, and he said, you know, I've been baking bread lately. And he said, I'm making really great sourdough bread. I love where this question's going, by the way. Thank <laughs> you, like, sir, Ooh. for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and he posted the pictures on Facebook, so I, I was like already watering my mouth. Like, where is he going with this? And he said, I woke up this morning thinking, why are we doing this Tai Chi and Qigong stuff? He said, because at least with bread, I have an end product and I get to enjoy the bread. But what, why are we doing this? And huh. yeah, I was like me. I was like, huh, because this is live, live streaming, full audience. Of I have a lot students. of students watching me right yes, now. Yeah, yes, right. I mean, Scary. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about it and I thought, wow, that's a great question. And it's, it's interesting a metaphor, actually, because, you know, bread is used so much as a metaphor. I hope you don't mind my mentioning, but in the Bible, bread is just all over the place sure. as a metaphor. And when in, in some of the Tai Chi classics, they talk about that we are, when we generate our chi, that we're actually kind of creating an internal oven. And by doing that, we're purifying ourselves. And we, we cleanse ourselves of the, the chi that's, you know, just not helping us. Okay. And I thought, well, what is the outcome? What is the bread? So I'm super glad you asked that question. And again, it goes back to the fact that it can take whatever you need and grow that bread or make that bread. So if you need to calm your anxiety, Tai Chi will calm your anxiety. And that's your loaf of bread. Right. Reduced anxiety. If you need to be stronger internally, it will give you that. If it's a medical need, like for example, I mentioned that I mountain biked mm -hmm. and I always had to use an inhaler. I had exercise induced asthma. Started doing Tai Chi. I have never needed an inhaler mm. again. Never mm. in, in all the years. So my loaf of bread, my outcome was that I no longer needed medication for my breathing. Yeah. Even though it's soft and you don't sweat and you don't, you're not working out and all that, my cardiovascular health is amazing. Compared to my, my hard-hitting athletic friends, they can't compete against me. Right. So that's a loaf of bread. That's one of the outcomes. That's a nice loaf of bread, too. It really is. Yeah. I happen to have seven herniated discs. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And you're still mountain bike? No. I'm not doing mountain biking because Tai Chi just it gratifies me on so many levels. Good. I don't need it anymore. Good. But... I You're don't have pain. Setting up with perfect posture. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. But I don't have pain, you know, and I have mobility. I can move just as well as a 30-year-old, and that's a loaf of bread. Yeah. But the biggest loaf of bread, I really, because I woke up the next morning myself thinking about that great question. I think Tai Chi helps us to overcome ourself. Okay. What do you mean by overcoming yourself? Yeah. So... When we go through life, you know, we have all of these, we come out pretty pure, in my opinion. You know, we're a baby, we're unscathed. And then as we go through life, we have a lot of influences on us. We have our family, we have the environment, even nutrition, the demands upon us, and distractions. Sure. Tons of distractions. Sure. And I think all of those things can mold us or influence us to be something other than what we what our true selves are and and it, it happens over time and over such a long timeline that we lose 
we don't even know it. We don't even realize that we've kind of come off course to who we really are. Right. We may feel a little discomfort, like I call it, uh, like sand in your clothes. You know, it's just this constant, like, wow, yeah. something's just not right. You know, and then we try to fill it with something else. You know, with shopping or whatever. Um, and I, I really believe that Tai Chi, because it gives us space, and it puts us in um, stillness, and it disciplines us to be not taken by the distractions, even if it's only in three minutes, even if it's just three minutes in that day. And in that place is where we begin to discover our true selves again. And so we overcome ourselves, that's two separate words, not ourself, but ourselves, the selves that has been taken somewhere that's not our original core. And it puts us back to ourself. Yeah. I, I really like that answer. I've done a lot of leadership training courses where I have taught people and been taught to lose your ego. Ah. To get back to yourself and lose your ego. But you're taking it a step further mm. than I've really ever thought about is just reverting back, trying to get back before you even had the chance to have an ego, yes. get back to that self before distractions, before all the weight on your shoulders and really just hone in on who you should be. Yes. I like that. That's a beautiful description. That's a very, very great answer, and it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that I'm, I'm so glad I had you do this. Me too. Yeah, because you've got interesting insight, and you're intuitively knowing what this is, which is really awesome, because there's lots of talk about the ego and letting go of the ego in Tai yeah. Chi, and I don't think a lot of people understand what that means, and... Yeah, and you even took it a step further, that returning, it's not even returning, it's returning to the before. Right. Which is that that place of purity. Right. And we all can access that. It's just that we need a medium in which to do that. And I think Tai Chi is one of those. Yeah. It's not threatening. It's fun. It can yeah. be fun. Should be fun. You Should know? be fun. Should be fun. Yeah. You know, Tai Chi, get all serious. That's why I have Tai Chi Tom here, you know, a little levity. He did Tai Chi so much that he grew a heart. You oh, see that? Yeah, I do. That's awesome. It's very nice. Yeah, because that's, awesome. that's what Tai Chi does. It just makes you feel good and you feel more, just feel more whole. Yeah, yeah. What got you into Tai Chi? <laughs> well, that's a good question, actually. So I'm an oh. occupational therapist. Okay. And for our OT license, I have to get continuing education. And... I own a continuing education company, and I'm the worst about getting continuing education for myself. <laughs> so I would always put it off, and then I would just dread it because it was boring, and we'd be sitting at a table all day, and I just didn't enjoy continuing ed. So this continuing education course came through, and it said Tai Chi for therapist or something like that. All right. Okay, so I had no idea what Tai Chi was, and honestly... I felt like, oh, this is going to be like really woo-woo. I mean, I was very opinionated. And, but I knew I wasn't going to be sitting at a desk board, so I thought, oh, I'll give this a try. And so I signed up and went into it not having any real concept of what it was, and something just really resonated with me. Huh. You know, I, we did the movements, really didn't understand the layers of what it was, but I think intuitively I knew that this was something special. Um, so I got my continuing ed credits, and then I moved on with my life, and I put it away, and I, I didn't come back to it. Okay. Which I think a lot of people will do initially, but it planted a seed. And they have a saying about Tai Chi that it comes to you when you're ready or when you need it most. And so apparently I didn't need it at that time. Okay. <laughs> so I put it away, and then two years later, continuing ed again. So I thought, oh, I'll do that Tai Chi stuff again. And did it again and thought, wow, I really need to be doing this. Because it was so opposite of who I am. All right. Like, I'm hard-hitting type of athletic uh, person, the adrenaline rush, doing mountain biking, windsurfing, I'm a private pilot, that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and so I felt like, gosh, Tai Chi was so slow. And so soft, and it was opposite of me. Uh -huh. So I felt like 
I needed to do something. I would, it was a challenge to do something opposite of who I felt like I was organically or just naturally. Okay. And it just started to take hold. And I did a little more and a little more. And eventually, I liked it so much, I thought, well, I'm going to offer this for free at the YMCA, teaching it. Oh, very cool. Yeah. But I didn't know whether I'd enjoy teaching it. Okay. You know, because teaching and doing are two different things. Totally different. Yeah. So... I started teaching and I had 50 people show up for my first class. Wow. Good show. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think it was about me because they didn't know me. Right. Right. It but was about the interest. Interest in Tai Chi. Yeah. Like, well, what is this? And I don't know, but there were 50 people. And so I ended up teaching there for two years. And then through word of mouth, um, I started getting requests to teach other places. Wow. And uh, Montana Banana, you need to leave Blake alone. <laughs> See, you know Blake's a good guy because Montana <laughs> loves him. Good boy. Anyway, so I started teaching more and more places until finally I evaluated what I wanted to do and how I wanted to help people. And I gave my, up my OT job, my occupational therapy job. Very cool. Yeah. And so now it's my life. And it's been a real interesting journey. I love the fact that you, you went, you got your feet wet in Tai Chi. And then you left it alone. Yeah. And then it had such an impact on you that when you went and got your feet wet again, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't kind of get away from it. Yeah. That's a really, that's a very good story. That's a very good origin story for you. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Thanks. I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Going back to your story though, someone who's maybe not as hard hitting as mm -hmm. you, someone who's not as... I'm a mountain biker. I like to run <laughs> face first into a wall. Someone who's more soft. Is there a version of Tai Chi for them? Ah, that's an excellent question. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I always say that Tai Chi takes you wherever you are. Okay. And it builds on that. It tends to grow on your strengths. And then it, it introduces new ways of going about things. So if you're a soft person already, then maybe, you know, every strength we have can also be a weakness. Sure. So if you're, I'm just putting this out there. If you're a softer person, you may also be someone who acquiesces too much and gives in too much or might need to work more on knowing boundaries and establishing those boundaries. Right. And so there, then Tai Chi would take you and make you more internally strong. Okay. And so then you would learn you, through the metaphor of moving, uh, you learn a way of navigating through the world where you yield without giving up who you are. I like that. Yeah. I don't know a lot about Tai Chi, but what you described in your own personal journey, being that hard hitter and then yeah. finding something that was soft, that sounds a lot like the concept of yin and yang. It is. Is that part of Tai Chi? Absolutely. That I is have no tai idea. Chi. All right. Look at that. that. Okay. Bar, quick learner there. I figured it out, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So oh. that symbol, that yin and yang symbol is all about balance. Okay. And so there's the, the black part. I used to have a yin yang pillow that was perfect, but guess who ate it? Oh, yeah. Mo <laughs> Montana sunrise, absolutely. Yeah, I mm -hmm. knew it was my favorite pillow. So you... But it's the black part and then the white part, and they fit together. And then there's a little bit of white in the black and a little bit of black in the white, showing that we always carry a little bit of the other in, in the overriding. But we want the thing is we want to balance those two, and that those opposites are what keeps us balanced. I didn't understand that when I first came to Tai Chi. And I do want to clarify that Tai Chi is not a religion. Okay. It's a philosophy. Okay. And I think a lot of people are afraid to approach Tai Chi because they think, oh, it's, you know, it may be a religion or it's dogmatic or it's against their belief or it's superstitious. And it's none of those things. It's a philosophy. And it can be spiritual, but that spirituality, spirituality. <laughs> That spirituality, folks. Thank you. Right. There we go. <laughs> will fit into your belief system. Okay. And it will enhance that and grow that in your understanding. So back to the question. It is the yin-yang and it balances. It's the act of balancing. So for every up, 
movement in Tai Chi, there's a down. Okay. In equal proportion, in every left, there's a right, every front, there's a back. So you're constantly trying to get that balance of movement. But this has an impact on our physiology. It actually moves our deeper system. It's called the fascia. Okay. And, our, and that fascia ha- generates energy, and then energy runs through your body, and then it helps to balance out. So you get a physical change, and then you start to get an emotional change, and then you get a chemical change. Yeah. And so what bothered me eight years ago, I would like to say, it, I, it rolls off of me. Okay. Not everything. Not everything. I, I mean, I'm still human. Sure, sure. But I'll, like something that would have just, I would have just like fixated on it and, and probably, I don't know, had anxiety about it or um, just became a vicious cycle. It's a lot more balanced now. Sometimes it just rolls off to the point I'm like, huh, wow, that it's so weird. It's such a weird feeling. Yeah. So Tai Chi's given you the mental and spiritual fortitude to kind of let most things that would have affected you just slide right off your back. Yeah, roll yeah, off, which is one of the things we do yeah. in Tai Chi. Or at least create space. Okay, what, what does that mean? Yeah, that's to me, Tai Chi, if I were to say, what is Tai Chi? It's about creating space. Okay. Because if you're crowded, you have to go into a fight or flight mode or mm-hmm. a reactive mode, right? Yeah. And whether that is crowded financially or crowded emotionally or physically, you know, like from the distance from here to here, mm. the more space that I create, then the more options I have and the more potential I have. And so in Tai Chi, we create space inside our body, which allows potential for the energy and for healing and for whatever opportunity we want to bring And then in our lives. So if you said something that upset me, which I know you won't, but if you said something that upset me, if I Mm -hmm. don't have space, emotional space, then I'm going to react and I'm just going to hurt myself. Sure. But if I create this space, then I can choose my response. I can create time, space between my response and the event. Or I can just not respond. Yeah. I used to think I had to respond to everything. Right, and, and making that conscious choice, giving those seconds that you've gained, right? Because right. we're talking a matter of moments. Yes. You choose not to respond, or you choose an appropriate response to it, right. as where before it was Major. reaction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. I love so, that. Yeah, it takes you out of the reaction. Yeah. Knowing that Tai Chi's not a religion, yeah. let's flip the coin. Is okay. Tai Chi a martial art? It is. It is. Yeah, Remember also that? very intuitive. Yeah, I promise I didn't tell him beforehand. (laughs) Hi, everyone. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, it is a martial art. In fact, that's where it originated from. Okay. In China, you know, thousands of years ago, it was utilized as a martial art. And it's a very close, ironically, it's a very close fighting. So you create this space internally rather than um, physically. But it is a very close martial art, but it's a soft martial art. One of the legends about how Tai Chi started was the Shaolin monks, well, they all practiced martial arts, and they tended to practice more of the hard-hitting kind of martial art. One day, the Shaolin monk goes out to eat his lunch, and he's sitting on a pond, which we have a beautiful pond right over here, and he's watching, and he sees a white crane and a snake, and they begin to fight. The snake starts to attack the white crane. Okay. And rather than the white crane attacking back, what it did is as the snake struck, it took that incoming momentum and slung the snake away. Okay. So So it's about taking that incoming momentum and using it against the opponent. So it's kind of like the transfer of energy. It's it's, it's using an opponent's energy against them. Yeah, exactly. Or their momentum. Or momentum, sure. Yeah, which both momentum, energy are interchangeable. And so that's how one of the legends on how Tai Chi started as a martial art. And so they began to cultivate that. Later, they found that by slowing it down, that there were a lot of health benefits. Mm. There's another legend somewhere that five monks got very, very ill, and the lead monk took them up to a cave somewhere, and they stayed there. And and then they, because they were so uh, arthritic and in such pain, they could hardly move. So they started doing their 
uh, martial art moved slowly. And once they came down out of the mountain and back to their village and were healed because they had healing properties from that mm -hmm. slow practice, but their power and their strength when they came back and engaged at regular speed was 10 times that of what the other guys were. Is that because when they slowed it down, they were able to make those small corrections to even just where their hand is placed yes. as opposed to when they're doing it fast, more things kind of get lost lost uh, in the translation? Yeah, I think that was part of it, certainly more refined, okay. um, going into a deeper layer or level of sensing what your body's doing. Um, nowadays, unfortunately, and I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, a lot of instructors will teach externally. So you just put your hand up for me and they'll say, okay, no, you know, you need to bend your wrist, your elbow mm. needs to be down, your pinky curve. So, you know, it's like that. Okay. Well, sure. now you've memorized that, but why? Right. And so this is an external approach where I take more of an internal approach. And this is where Tai Chi has really, unfortunately, over the years been so watered down. And people get dogmatic about it. In fact, I'll probably get some comments. Yes, please do leave a comment, but make it nice. And like and subscribe. <laughs> and like and subscribe. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the other hand, if you had your elbow up and your wrist back like this, now take a breath. And your breath is up here. Okay, now drop your elbow down for me and curve your wrist a little. And now take a breath. And your breath is down, down there. there. Very interesting. So Very that's Very interesting. Right? Yeah. So you just you just changed your posture, you changed your chemistry. Yeah. You made more space in a way and your breath went So I never teach how to breathe. Okay. Because we're supposed to do belly breathing and abdominal breathing and all that. But if things are correct, then your body knows how to knows breathe. Knows how to breathe, right. Okay. Because from what I know about meditation is it all needs to be belly breathing. You're not supposed to breathe in and breathe in through your chest. You're supposed to breathe in kind of down here. Right. So it's interesting just by twisting my arm, you were able to get me to breathe properly. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Quite amazing. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And that's really um, one of the beauties of Tai Chi. So is it like a moving meditation Absolutely. almost? Absolutely. Very much so. Okay. And to me, when I thought about trying to meditate, that was just really daunting. And because I had this belief system and mental block that like, well, uh, we are designed to be aware of our environment. Right. For survival. Absolutely. And so from my perspective, going into meditation where we close down and, we're, and we become so internal that we're not aware, that was my what I was thinking at the time. I just felt like it was counter to what we should be doing. Whereas Tai Chi, the more you get uh, into the zone of that moving meditation, then the more aware you are of your environment, you can see a butterfly 300 yards away. Right. But you're in this calm state so right. that you can handle it. And so I think Tai Chi is a great entry door into the door of meditation. You can get there so much easier because your mind is calm because you're thinking the movement. And then maybe over time, you can get into the more seated, non-moving based meditation. Sure, sure. But it is a moving meditation. Absolutely. I like it. There's a lot of terms in Tai Chi, and I'm not going to butcher all of them. I'm going <laughs> to butcher some of them, but I know Qi, I know Qi, I know that's all I know and I'm willing to butcher. <laughs> what are these terms? What, what do they stand for? And is there is there like rooted meaning behind like I actually feel this. I yes. actually am pushing energy out or wh whatever these terms mean. Yeah. Wow. Another terrific question. Okay. I think the terminology scares a lot of people off. It scares me off. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. There you go. See, proof positive. <laughs> and so I, it's kind of one of my little pet peeves when folks get so fixated on the, term, the Chinese terminology. Because one thing, we're not Chinese. Sure. And right. It's Chinese language is so picture based and layered and nuanced. Nuanced. Absolutely. Yeah. So I can't pretend to know, and I certainly cannot pronounce Chinese words. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, I think, yeah, I'm just terrible at it. And then trying to remember them also. That's just like my 
my Achilles heel. That's not my forte. <laughs> my forte is teaching and making it accessible. So the terminology is, the basic terminology is good to know. And I do have on my website some deciphering common terminology or a glossary of terms. So feel free to go to my website, flowingmobility.com and check that out. Some of them are pretty universal to know. For instance, there's all these different styles of Tai Chi. So there's Yang style, there's Sun style, there's Wu style, there's Chen style. Okay. Yeah, it's like, are you going zzz? No, so, so when I hear different styles of Tai Chi, yeah. are we talking like it's a different form? Like it's a difference between like Kung Fu and Kung Fu Mantis style? Right. Or are they just different like katas, like in Japanese culture for like different karate forms. Okay, that's good. That's good to have that base of knowledge. It's different, like a different dialect of the form. Okay, okay. Like a language, you know, we all speak English, but yet we have different dialects. Right. And that's kind of the way I look at it. Okay. So the Yang family, for example, does waving hands and clouds a certain way. The hands are facing the body. And the Chen style said, no, 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 we're going to be out here. It's a much more distant fighting style. So the hands are out here, and it's more of a, a linear spiral. And then the Sun style, the hands are out and down. And there's another different nuance to that. And each type of name is actually just a name. It's like the Thompson style or the O'Neill style. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's okay. it. So people get, you know, all, oh, I do young style. Well, it's, it's a family and it, yes, it has lineage and it has history, but we have to be really careful about assigning too much, um, oh, what would be the word? Allegiance. Okay. Because the history of Tai Chi is, is sad, really, because it's been sabotaged over the years on purpose so that the, the dynasties that came in and took over didn't have the real true secrets of, of Tai Chi. Right. They're just, they're just following forms. They're not. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yeah. They've lost the true essence of it. And they, they tried to keep it in the family. So they only taught it inside the family. And they did this secretly because otherwise they'd be killed right. by their government. And it would be passed down. Well, even in a family, if it's passed down, it's like the... The gossip line. Yeah, the telephone game. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Right. You know, you, we, I tell you grape, and by the end of the thing, it's, you know, something it's else. refrigerator. Right, refrigerator. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that there's little parts of that. And then Grandmaster Yang, when he was ordered to teach it to the Manchurian army, he didn't want to give them the real deal. So I feel like he intentionally made some forms that are you can't reconcile it with the principles of Tai Chi. There's a really good book on this. This is not just coming from my belief system. I mean, I sort of felt this all along, and then I read Tai Chi Classics by Wei, Wei Su Liao. I'll put that down in the description also, and I'm not an affiliate, and I'm not making money off of that either, but it really tells you the history. And, I, and when I read it, it explained a lot of things, and I think what it tells us as contemporary Tai Chi players is don't assign too much meaning to what you think you know. Sure. Yeah. Sure. At, at least on the external. Because our body tells us. Like when I... If we're doing it right. Yes. Yeah. Your, and, your body's already giving you it. So why are you putting yourself in group A, B, or C when the end goal is to just be you and practice properly? Yeah. 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 I love that you are teaching it. I love that you have a YouTube channel that you oh, have your entire catalog on. Yeah. So how many students do you have? Do you do live classes? Is oh. it all, how, how, tell me how someone gets into getting into one of your classes. And oh, well, great. I didn't tell him to do this. So that is very nice of you. Very thoughtful. I, my, I teach live streaming three days a week. Okay. And that's Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Central Time. Okay. And I have people from all over the world. And it's really cool because when we had the COVID shutdown, I was already positioned as fate would have it. People hadn't even heard of Zoom and I was already getting ready to use Zoom for somebody else. But it, it really, it opened up so many doors that I actually got people from all over the world. Good. So it was really neat. And to my delight, they want to continue. 
So I'm still teaching three days a week with that's, live stream. That's awesome. And then I teach three classes in person here in um, my general area, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Okay. And on my YouTube channel, I, I have, I'm getting close to about 8,000 subscribers. Very cool. So I'm hoping that, so please subscribe because I really need that number to go up to even more. And I have online courses as well. And I've probably sold, oh gosh, uh, six to 7,000 students all over the world cool. with those courses. I, I don't make a ton of money off of that, but it's gratifying because I know that I'm at least starting people on their Tai Chi journey. And some of them rely heavily on those courses to continue their Tai Chi journey. Sure. And one of the things that I do that's unique is that I reverse mirror teach. So if you go on and you say, oh, I'm going to learn Tai Chi, and you go onto an online course, and the instructor's saying, okay, waving hands to the left, not only are you having to learn the form, but you're having to try to reverse it. Because they're the right. facing you. Yes. Because they're facing you, and I'm going to say, let's go left. Yeah. But to you, it's right. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I can't do it. I can't. I have tried, and I just can't do that. It's like double learning. So I reverse it. And I'm not using um, video technology to reverse it because I started doing this before that even existed. And so I actually reverse the form. And so what the person sees is the direction and the, the way they need to go. And I get lots of feedback that that really makes the difference in the learning curve. That probably helps quite a bit of people just yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. So extremely gratifying to know that, I mean, on a minimum, you've touched 7,000 people <laughs> yeah. and, and helped them through their journey. Yeah. So what's a goal of yours that oh. you have over the next, I don't know, <laughs> three or four years? Oh, wow. Well, <sighs> I'm going to get emotional about that okay, one. Okay, sorry. Oh. Yeah, so my goal is just I really want to reach as many people as I can. Absolutely. When I do my meditation, whatever, I have this vision. And on one of my online platforms, they put little dots wherever somebody's bought my course. And so you see those dots like all over the world. I just want those dots to spread and light up the whole world. Yeah, absolutely. And so I see this, I literally see a vision of the world and seeing the lights come on. And each light is somebody that I've touched. And that light is just spreading all across. So I don't want to be limited to 8,000 people. I'd sure. love to have 80,000 people, 8 million people. I mean, I, I really, I'm passionate about it, what I do. I'm sincere about what I do. And one of my goals in life, even as a young child, as odd as it may seem, was to have a positive impact on people's lives. Sure. And this Tai Chi has given me that platform and that avenue and the passion to do that. So three years from now, I would, I would love to be having a very solid reach across the world, hold retreats and have people, you know, have a waiting list. Yeah. So then I have another retreat so that I can really spread the true essence of Tai Chi, not just hold your arm here and, and the external parts, but all of the deeper layers of what Tai Chi can right. bring to a person. I don't want to put words in your mouth, oh, but the right. more spiritual, the yeah. more, let's remove all the fluff. Let's just yes. get down to the bare bones of what Tai Chi is supposed to be. Yes, or the essentials. Essentials, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, the essentials, because... You know, there's competitions in Tai Chi and all that just brings it back out to the external. You're just, I don't know how that even works because competition immediately puts ego back oh, in yes. to the forefront. And I, from what you've told me, that's against what Tai Chi Absolutely. is about. Absolutely. Good point. Yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how that works, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. See? So it just doesn't fit, does it? No. And I mean, I'm sure, and I don't mean to like criticize people that go to competition. Maybe that's your thing and maybe that's how you want to express Tai Chi. However, it's just so much more. Right. You know, in fact, I tell my students when they come to me, I'll have a student come to me, a new student, and they'll say, I want to learn the 24 form, which is the most popular form set. And I'll tell them I'm not the person for that. You can use my course for that. I have a course that teaches you that. But it teaches you some of the internal things as well, okay? But I'd rather you do three forms and have the spectacular layered experience, feeling the depth of what Tai Chi is, and do those three forms well and experientially and sensing and having all these things happen, then learn 24 forms. Right. 
And my, my teaching and my student body has changed over the years. And now they're so into this. They're moving slower and slower and slower. And be, because they feel, and they, there's, they feel so much just with one simple move. Right. And the more advanced I get, I started out with 73 forms. The more advanced I get, the more internal I become, the less forms I need. So now I do one or two forms in my practice in a day. That's and awesome. sometimes I don't even move at all. <laughs> sometimes I'm doing just standing meditation and I feel so much there that I don't need anything else. Nice. All right, I got one for you. Everything you're telling me about Tai Chi is it's deeper. It's a meditative. It doesn't need to be just for X people or just for Y people. It's for everyone. So I think back to when I was smaller. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard to think of me being smaller. <laughs> And my dad telling me that football players used to do ballet. Ah, uh, yes. Is there something for someone that's in that hard-hitting football, mm -hmm. combat sport, construction worker? Is this going to help them yeah. if they did Tai Chi? And what kind of time investment would they need to put into it? Oh, that's a great question. For one thing, Tai Chi helps to restore your joints. Okay. So it's great for people who have arthritis and things like that. It decreases pain. It promotes more nutritional flow to the joints. So mm -hmm. it can have those healing properties. Also, it teaches you to move in a more efficient way. Okay. Our Western-minded thinking is more the hard-hitting and using muscles to make something happen. And in my classes, I teach... teach I want you to be effortless rather than effortful. Okay. Uh, so if you take a football player and you teach them these strategies, they uh, won't need to be so bulky, but could have the same um, impact or a better impact. And here's an example. Um, I like football. So uh, Aaron Rodgers. I love to watch Aaron Rodgers because if you look at him, his musculature, he's not bulky. No, he's not large. I'm, well, no? comparatively. Yeah, yeah, but not even size-wise. He's He doesn't have, like, defined muscles mm -hmm. and bulk. He's very soft-looking. If you look at his arms, they're very soft. And then when I watch him throw that football, it is so Tai Chi. We learn to use the deeper structures, the the bones, the ligaments, the tendons, and our fascia rather than the muscles. And in accessing that, we actually gain more power, more efficiency of movement, and more effectiveness, mm -hmm. and less propensity for injury. Okay? So I'm going to give you a little example. We'll see how this goes. Okay. If it doesn't go well, I'll just edit it out. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, so, well, stand up. We'll try it. Okay. I'm going to give a little example of Western-minded versus. Okay, so just grab, I'm not going to like toss you through. Oh, you're all good. <laughs> Even if you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> grab my wrist. Okay, so if I were Western-minded, and to answer your question, if I was a football player or all those hard hitting, then naturally I would try to fight you. Okay? Sure. So if I would try to push you over, I'm not going to win. Sure. Right? I mean, I'm just trying to use muscle. I'm engaging my muscles. If I let go of my muscles and I don't use my muscles and I try to use Tai Chi... I know it's slow, but... Oh, you're good. Do you feel that you're starting I to do. back? I do. Huh? Okay, but my muscles are soft, I promise. And so I'm using more of the internal structures, and you're beginning to lean on mm -hmm. it because you're... I like, am well, beginning to lean yeah, on so it. So then, <laughs> you see how I can yeah. take you? Yeah, that's, that was interesting. That's, it is, that was, that was very interesting because immediately in my head, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to hurt you to hold you there. And I'm like, that's not the demonstration. Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah, that so what did very, you feel? I felt, so, does that make sure I'm in frame? Yeah. So yeah. I felt as you were just, um, as she was, as I was trying to hold her, I literally felt my joints going back. So I continued to put pressure on it, and I felt like I was almost white knuckling it to hold her in place. That was very interesting, Susan. And then from my perspective, I felt nothing. That you, in other words, you felt like you had to work harder. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's really important to pair up with people so that you can get the, feel, the, the, the validation. I felt like I was working less. Yeah. And I was actually borrowing your strength 
and turning it and using it to you, towards you. So this is, but I wasn't doing it by flexing my muscles. Yeah. Because as soon as I flex my muscles, you feel, you know, I'm rigid and it just comes right back at me. Right. Okay. And so if you just throw a punch at me, if I, yeah, do it again. Do it again. If I do that, see how it just comes right yeah. back at me. Yeah. Do it again. If I'm soft, it went back at you. Right. Did you see mm -hmm. how you ricocheted back? Yeah. That's Tai Chi. I'm not using muscles. Very cool. <laughs> it is cool. Very cool. So can you imagine? That's why I think like Aaron Rodgers is throwing that ball more in a Tai Chi than using muscles. Okay. Same kind of thing. I like so it. How does it help football players? It gives you a more efficient, effective. Player. It gives you more tools in your tool belt, for and, sure. Yeah, and more power. Right. I mean, how is it that I'm 110 pounds and I could move you? Yeah, 325. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't it neat? That's very is, neat. This is the part about Tai Chi that I get like I'm really excited about because it, it's an equalizer. Sure. And it's counterintuitive. You know, yeah, that, I'm, I'm still like all tingly from that. <laughs> I just, mm, 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 not again. <laughs> That's energy. That's yeah. the chi. So chi represents itself in tingles and warmth. And so I probably transferred some energy to you during that time too. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. With that being said, you've been doing this for a while. A while, yeah. So being like a high school football player or even someone going into college that wants to give themselves an edge or uh -huh. even a track and field person, yeah. what kind of time allowance would they need to start seeing any real improvement? Because these guys yeah. are already probably working out six hours a day. Are they going to be able right. to do it 30 minutes a week? Are they going to be able to do it an hour a week? To gain benefit? To gain some sort of benefit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Hmm. Hmm. The only reason I say this is because I know a lot of gentlemen that do construction or people that have broken discs in their back yes. and I probably won't be able to sell them on, hey, you need to do Tai Chi every day. Yeah. But if it's, if it's, hey man, if you just dedicate two hours a week ah, in, in, in three okay. months, you're gonna start feeling better. Right, okay, yes, it is a hard sell. Right. Because it's so soft. So that's why I do some hands-on with guys like sure. that. So they are like, whoa, what yeah. is this? Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is when I started Tai Chi, I was like, I'm too busy for this and I'm not sure and everything. So I made a very small commitment. I said, I'm doing three minutes of Tai Chi a day. Okay. Wow. That's a really small commitment. It is. Yeah. By doing that, then I ended up actually maybe doing a little bit more, but it was three minutes is all I committed to a day. And it wasn't even really good Tai Chi. It was like, you know, what I thought was Tai Chi, but. Sure. And there's that piece where it takes you where you are and just grows from that. So I happened to have had an injury for about six months where I couldn't mountain bike. And my friend, my mountain biking friend, was still mountain biking twice a week like we did. That's it. Nothing else. No lifting weights. No running. No cross training. Nothing. All I did was three minutes of Tai Chi a day. Okay? After six months, time comes to ride together and I know she's just going to annihilate me. It's right. going to be very humiliating. Right. My cardiovascular is going to be bad, et cetera, et cetera. I got on that bike and I outrode her. Couldn't believe it. I mean, really, I, at this point, because I'm medically trained, I to this day don't really understand how Tai Chi works, truly. I just say it's magic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because six months of being off the bike and she's in great shape, still riding, and I outrode her. My cardiovascular was better. My leg strength was better. Hmm. Everything was better from three minutes a day. And it wasn't even like super duper high grade Tai Chi. Right. So I think that you just need consistent practice. Okay. And I would say three minutes a day is a great starting place. Okay. And you have to be aware of the changes because they can be really kind of subtle, subtle at first. Okay. Yeah. But then after a while, you're like, wow, what's happening? And then you have to associate it with that Tai Chi because it is the Tai Chi making that difference. Yeah. And in that instance, I was doing nothing else. So it was undeniable. It had to be about the Tai Chi. And that's what really sold me. But it didn't need a big, long commitment. To no, three, three minutes a day is... Right. I, 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 
I mean, all of us that are watching this probably have a job. I work upwards of 10 to 12 hours a day wow. at multiple jobs. I've got three minutes. I've got three minutes. Yeah. Absolutely. I can dedicate three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll find that you start to look forward to the three minutes and that it's your mini vacation. Right. That's what one of my Tai Chi uh, teachers talked about, the standing meditation. You know, it's kind of hard to be disciplined to do it. But if you reframe it and say, it's my mini vacation, right. then you look forward to it. It's that one place that's sacred. And when I say sacred, I don't necessarily mean in a religious way. If you look up the definition of sacred, there's a lot of religious sure. definitions. But one of the definitions is something that you do not allow anything to infringe upon. Mm -hmm. So you make those three minutes your sacred time, your time that nothing can infringe upon. Right. This is this is my un unplug from my phone, turn my computer off, right. lock myself in your office or your bedroom or whatever, and you just yes. be free for three minutes. Yeah. yeah. And it's your three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you put Tai Chi in the equation and, you know, good things are bound to happen. Whether you're a football player, construction player. Uh, someone who's injured, someone who just doesn't yes. want to try something new for right. a huge investment of time just give it three minutes a day yeah just give it three minutes a day and no matter how old you are too I, I one of the kind of frustrating things to me is that people think tai chi is just for older people mm -hmm. and the truth of the matter is that i really feel like our younger generation needs this even more my father's generation and his father's generation know how to unplug yeah. They know how to jump on a John Deere and go mow the yard. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas when I jump on the John Deere, I've got my headphones in. I'm <laughs> listening to music. I'm listening to a podcast. I can't unplug. I don't right. know how to unplug. Even when I'm doing something that's supposed to just be about me, I can't unplug. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 It is very much a plugged in society. So, right. You know, those three minutes could just be really magical. Could make big changes. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone. Even little children seem to be drawn to Tai Chi. On the occasion, I've done Tai Chi outside at a park with a group, and little kids will stop, and they'll either just stop completely entranced. I mean, young children who have an attention span of a flea right. become quiet and watch, or they'll start doing it. Right. They'll just start moving. There's something, something about it. Yeah, there's something almost primordial about being slow, yeah. about just knowing where every single molecule of your body is and, and, and yes. doing something on a repetitive basis. Yeah. You sure you haven't done Tai Chi? I have before? not done Tai Chi. Because <laughs> that's a very beautiful description of Tai Chi. Yeah. Everyone uh, I loved our demonstration. That was me good. too. That, that, that actually threw me off. <laughs> like, I'm still shaking that off. <laughs> It's surprising, isn't it's it? It's very surprising. <laughs> um, it's very surprising. Just three minutes a day, that's that's nutty. Yeah. That's an easy commitment to make. It is. I think people try to make too big of a commitment, and then they fail, and then they feel bad about failing. Then they associate that failure with whatever it was they attempted, yeah. Tai Chi or whatever, and then they don't want to go back to it. Right. And I right. think keeping it to almost below realistic. Like if your realistic goal is, you know, 10 minutes a day, then make it less than that. And then do half. Yeah. Right. Do, do, make do it so less. ridiculously easy to do that if for some reason you didn't do it, then it wasn't the right time and place for your life. Right. I think we get ourselves in trouble when we try to make too big of a commitment. Absolutely. I can, I can remember when I was much younger when I was like 19, mm -hmm. I mean, I would work out for three hours a day. Wow. Just trying to obtain that, ooh, I'm in shape look. Yeah. And then one of my neighbors or one of my friends said, is that your job? Oh, wow. Because if it's not your job, why are you spending so much time on it? Wow. Yeah. And like, I, wasn't, I never worked out for the health benefits. I never uh -huh. worked out to be healthy. I worked out yeah. to look good. I, I worked out yeah. to achieve that thing. And then someone just said, that's not your job. That's really interesting. Well, you're right. It's really not my job. I don't need to show muscles. Yes. I, don't, I don't need to have every single thing worked on. I don't need to spend three hours a day on this. Yeah. Like I wasn't happy. And that's, and that's a really good illustration of the external approach. Absolutely, yeah. That we really get, I think our society and our whole world, in fact, is so externally driven now. 
Mm -hmm. And that's part of that losing our way kind of thing I was talking about, you know, getting over ourselves through Tai Chi. We think that it's this external stuff, but Tai Chi lets us discover more of the internal. Yeah. If a person worked out because they felt like they were making a health benefit rather than for the the physical look, that's the secondary byproduct. Sure. But the truth of the matter is in Tai Chi, we, you don't want to bulk up. You right. don't want to have those muscles because they get in the way of becoming more internal. Yeah. Having that softer approach, being able to send that energy through you like I did. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting too. Have you ever read Franklin Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? <laughs> this is so awesome. Yes, I used so to that, be a facilitator. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. Because in yeah. his book, he always talks about forgetting your ego. Leave your yes. ego. Take off your perspective glasses and look at it through a different perspective. Yes. And then what you said about not about getting back to your true self, I was immediately got brought back to that those training courses. And yeah. Okay, so she just went like a lot deeper. Than what you expected. <laughs> well, not even what I expected because I even remember having to train supervisors and train managers that would go to other places and take over uh, locations. And I would teach them what I learned through those classes and I'd send them to those classes. And I'd always tell them it's about losing your ego. It's about checking your ego. It's about yeah. all that. And you, you just ignored ego. You're like, yeah, no, your ego has to go. Yeah. And then after that, you need to break yourself down to That's right. your true self. Yeah. One of the people I study with, he talks about um, reverse engineering. Okay. So it's really interesting that you heard that, that you're describing that basically, that we reverse engineer ourselves back to that yeah. core, that beyond, you know, that we are no longer that ego. And it's it's a hard concept because... I think, in part, we have to have some ego to survive. Absolutely. But there's just, there's, it goes back to that, that balance and not letting it, not letting the external world just take over our world mm -hmm. and our life and losing ourselves in that. And today's time, it's just so easy to be distracted yeah. by everything. And that three minutes a day, that's the time that we get back to the core. It was interesting because when you're born or when you're a child, you're at your most pure. Yeah. But you can't survive at being that. Right. So you have to have something with you. But at the mm -hmm. same time, getting as close to that as possible. Yes. Like um, some people have a really good long-term memory and can remember, oh yeah, I remember when I was three years old. I don't remember anything Me neither. <laughs> from when I was a kid, yeah. but I can just imagine how happy I was. Oh, that's you know what great. I mean? Yeah. Like you can you can imagine like oh when I was a kid everything was so new everything was so exciting. Yes. I'm, like I'd love to just be that happy. Yeah. Not to say I'm not happy now. I love no. my wife. Love my dogs. Love everything. Love right. my new house. Yes. But just to get to that giddy state. Oh. That like that. oh wow that was great. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that goes back to that space. Mm -hmm. So we create space. Well, so what? Well, then what do we fill it with? So we can fill it with, once again, all the externals. The cell phones, the, the, yeah. the TV, everything. The distraction. Sure. They got to, you know, keep up with the Joneses kind of thing. Or we can fill it with a moment of that giddiness. Yeah. Or a moment of that joyfulness. And, and people say, well, how do you do that? I think first you just have to pretend. You have to just pretend or, or generate while you're doing your Tai Chi or your sure. meditation, that moment of joy, like remember a moment of joy. I mean, Monty brings lots of joy. Yeah. And so I'll just go there mm -hmm. and then my heart will feel that. And then I can call on it more. And then I can go to that place more. Make it more of like a core memory, something that you can kind of enshrine in your soul to go back to that Monty moment and right. you might need it. Yeah. And I can fill that space with that moment. Yeah. Just like you were filling the, you don't have memory of childhood, so you're sure. filling that space with happiness. Right, because I can only assume I was happy as there a kid. I had a great See? upbringing, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, so why not? Why yeah. not? If we have a, a, a space there, why not fill it with something yeah. that, that lightens our heart and makes us feel good about ourselves? So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, like I said, we'll make more. Okay. We'll just, we'll come back. We'll put them into maybe 30, 45 minute okay. podcasts. Okay. It was fun. I'm finding that people are really liking the deeper stuff that I'm putting out. Good. At first I was really feeling vulnerable about that. 
putting that out there. But one time I, I was waiting on a Zoom private lesson. And, and so I just, I had this deep thought come into mind. So I just flipped on the camera and I just did a complete spontaneous talk about the purpose of life. I mean, that's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a five minute video. And that video has gotten so many incredible comments, really positive comments. And people who have seen that video email me and it's been such a, it's been such a rich experience. Yeah. So it's, I don't think people are as shallow as what they're putting out there we are. I don't think so because my experience is that the more sincere, the more I have the courage to go ahead and just put it out there. Right. And and I think the, the, the fact that you shared that your, your video about the meaning of life mm. has had such a um, bigger impact than you expected it to have is a, so. is, a, is a good quantifier that people are, are looking yeah. for. How do I do more? How do I help more? How do I, how do I answer these questions? Yeah, yeah, they're looking, they're searching, and it's not a shallow search. No, it's not. It's, it's it's not what beauty t tips am I looking up today? Right. It's what's the meaning of life? Yeah, stumbling across that video and then going that extra mile to respond, send you an email, or leave you a comment, or yes. like, um, you know how difficult that hurdle is just yes. to get someone to leave you a comment. It so. really is. It is. And then when somebody goes in the extra step, because um, YouTube's not easy to navigate, mm -hmm. and you have to go into the home page of my YouTube channel to find my email address. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is extra steps. So right. People really are searching for this kind of thing. Yeah. And hope it'll continue to spread. I, I hope so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, you just really, I mean, we didn't rehearse this or anything, just kind of came up with a few questions, but we decided to go off script and not even have that. And Blake has just done a fabulous job. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks. We'll do it again. Absolutely. It's great to meet you all. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That. Okay. All right, so we're just doing a test run of our sound. And Tai Chi Tom, Tom takes a dive. He you're okay, buddy. Uh -uh. You know you're not allowed to get up on me. Sit. Thanks, buddy. Let's go, boy. Getting him under control. Okay. okay. All right, let's see how that worked. <laughs>